in today's show. It's a mock draft, a 12-team, nine-category mock draft. It's part of my series of the first round, and we are picking at pick number seven. I also pick Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds and lines than ever before. BetOnline is where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. It's a mock draft. It's the seventh pick. Did a points league mock draft earlier today. I am going to be getting Jason Tatum with pick seven in this draft. We'll get into that in just a second. But I'm going to tell you that betonline.net is your number one source for all football betting info this season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis and articles on every game you can find. And as always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all sports wagering information, including live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. Week five. For the NFL is just around the corner, and we've got the San Francisco 49ers and the Panthers. Six and a half point favorites to the 49ers. Is that a realistic line? Can Jimmy G get it done over the Panthers and their whatever it is that they're doing? I don't know, but if you want to find out whatever the line is for your favorite team in your favorite game of the week, check it out over at Better Line. It's not just that. They have everything, uh, and it's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events like Major League Baseball playoffs, the MMA. The the MMA, that doesn't sound right. Boxing and golf. So head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Don't forget also to check out our uh, Ultimate NBA Season Preview. Just search Ultimate NBA Season Preview. It's all the locked on hosts. It's me. It's Odyssey NBA experts. And it starts on October the 10th. All right. Getting ready for this mock draft. Let's let's do it. Warnie, where are you? Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're in here in the draft now. Everyone's there. Let's unpause and go. Pick number seven. I am going to take Jason Tatum unless someone screws it up and takes him in front of me. And then I'm just going to rewind the draft and make sure I get Jason Tatum because this is what a mock draft is and I'm trying to just do a something with Jason Tatum. So we'll see how that works out. Um, everyone ready to go? Jokic is going to go at one. DJ, let's go. We're on. All right, Big Chungus goes at number one. Big, big Chungus, Big Chungus, Big Chungus, Big... Giannis at two. Giannis, and he to talk a ton of two. I saw in some of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball bowl drafts that Kevin Durant went at two. I am going to put together a show looking at ADP across all 30 divisions in categories and then all 30 divisions in points to give you an idea of where those things um, play out. But we haven't finished all the drafts yet. That'll come at some point early next week, I'm guessing. Jokic, Giannis, Durant goes at three. What's Kev the C pickle going to do? Let's go, mate. Hey, I just also want to um, not remind you guys, but be really careful about joining um, Yahoo Pro Leagues or Cash Leagues or random Facebook groups of, you know, this cash leagues. There's so many stories I get of, hey, this guy didn't pay up and now he's blocked me. Um, if I'm going to join leagues, go join Adam and B-Dub and Matt over at FBI International. Sorry, FBI Basketball, which is Fantasy Basketball International. Uh, all right, it's my pick. I might as well take Tatum there because that's what I said I was going to do. It went Jokic, Giannis, Durant, Embiid, Harden, Doncic. Just go to fbibasketball.com and you'll see all the leagues. They've got their Fantasy World Cup, which is a similar competition to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl. They've got plenty of redraft leagues, dynasty leagues, draft only leagues. But that is the place to go where you know that your money is safe and you know you will get your payouts. Some of these other people are legitimate scammers. I'm not going to say their names, but I think some of you will know who they are. But your best just not to trust these people. Go to fbibasketball.com. That is where you get competitive leagues. 
And anyone who's been in those leagues will tell you and, and tell you how trustworthy these guys are. Go over there and that's where you join leagues. Don't go to these random Facebook groups. Tatum at seven. Steph at eight. Tatum at seven. That was me. Steph at eight. Lamello at nine. Trey at 10. Lillard at 11. Towns at 12. Halliburton 13. One of the most stock standard first rounds that you could find. That is how it goes. That is how it should go most of the time. You can quibble with the order as much as you want, but whatever. That is all totally, totally fine. Um, we've got DJ here saying he wouldn't touch Lamelo in the first round because the Hornets are going to be bad and Victor Wembanyama said, they, have you heard of Michael Jordan before? Is Michael Jordan someone who's going to deliberately throw games? I honestly don't think so. And again, like... I think it's so. I think it is going to get massively overblown. I think it's going to get absolutely massively overblown. This I'm not because people are just going to end up. Well, I'm not drafting from these ten teams, and I'm not drafting from these seven teams because they're going to be locked in their playoff seed. You're going to be drafting from ten teams. Anyway, Booker goes at fifteen. It's coming to my selection. I need to work out what I'm going to do. Booker would have been nice with Tatum there, but you know what? I will do if I can. I'm going to. I will take Kyrie. Um. Gobert goes at 16. Oh, whoo. Interesting. I reckon Pete might do me in here with Kyrie. But Kyrie and Curry is a weirdish pairing with a lot of missed game risk. Not that it's going to happen necessarily, but I am going to take old mate here. Kyrie, if I get the chance to. Come on, Pete. Let's go. Clock is ticking, my guy. Ooh, now that is early as well. Holy shit. Sabonis at 17. I'll take Kyrie. All right. Let's see how this works out for me. Sabonis, that is early. That is early. Um, Nurkic Circus is up. Is What's he going to do after taking Doncic in round one? I can't believe Gobert and Sabonis went that early. Davis hasn't gone. Not that he necessarily has to. Well, there he goes at number 19. Paul George hasn't gone. The second round is a wasteland, though, guys. It is rough out there in these second round streets. Paul George at 20. I actually really like that one. It's a big red, big red bluey over here. I'm sure, I'm assuming this doesn't happen in the States, but a common nickname in Australia for someone with red hair is either sauce, because like a tomato sauce ketchup, or bluey. Because red and blue are opposite. That's the sort of dumb shit that we do. It's like calling someone the big fella. When they're the only reason you call someone big fella is if they're actually huge, massively tall, massively jacked, massively fat, or they're the opposite of those. Tiny, skinny, short. Like I call Obi, who is this big, he's the big fella. Cause he's because he's not a big fella. Tell we tell we roll. Anyway, DeJounte Murray goes at 21 on a timer expired pick. Sick. Kawhi Leonard goes at number. What is it? Number 22 for Kawhi. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> and then Goose goes at 23. Zion at 24 to pair with Jokic. Zion, people are jumping up on Zion. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Um, what I am also seeing, that was Raf taking uh, Anthony Edwards, Raphael Johnson from Roto World. I am seeing Anthony Edwards, who was going 15, 16 in a lot of drafts, starting to slide back down towards the end of the second. To me, he's more of an early third, but I can't really argue too much with end second. Raf also, or after Zion, it was Fred Van Vliet, and then after Raf took Goose, he took Pascal Siakam. So that's a pretty good pick, I think, there for Siakam as well. Siakam does slide in some drafts. Um, that's not really him sliding there, but it is pretty solid. What am I, I going to do? <sighs> Cade might be good for me. Garland might be good. I haven't really drafted Garland in many spots. Adebayo goes at 27. Let's just throw Cade and Garland and Mitchell. Well, Cade just went, so I can't take him at number... Well, he just went at 29. My name is Richie Cunningham. Oh, 28, sorry. Paul Zingas goes at 29. Wow, just really taking well, flight. So just- tell me what you think of this for an idea. Oh, actually, don't tell me because I'm having gone through it yet but I'll get to it in a second maybe Jimmy Butler I haven't drafted Jimmy Butler really anywhere either of course that's a big risk but in round three and pairing him with Irving oh, I don't oh. what do I take Morant Beal goes ahead of Jar Morant I have not seen that you know what let's take Jar Beal ahead of Jar Morant Beal at 30 Morant at 31 alright let's take Jar um, 
what about this? Like I'm doing this 12 mock draft thing where I pick from all positions in the first 12 picks. I am going to do a 14 and a 16. I am going to do another auction. I am going to do an ESPN points. That's all going to come. But what about this? If I do one mock draft, it doesn't matter what position I pick from, where I go all safe picks, all the consensus idea of a safe pick, no injury risk, no shutdown risk. I just try to take the safe, boring players. And then I do another mock draft where I go, I just take the flyers. I take Zion and I pair him with Kawhi and I pair him with Kyrie and I pair him with Shea and just take the all flyer pick. Take Isaiah Jackson at 80 and take all of these guys that we're waiting until the end of the season for stuff to start to happen. Um, um, Jar at 31, Don Mitchell at 32, Chris Paul at 33. Is the second round, disaster. Third round, value everywhere. I, that's how I feel. Third and fourth round, you can really start to do well. But the second round, it's not that they're bad players because they're obviously good and I think they can finish there. It's just that there's so many question marks and risks associated with them that you just don't feel confident with any of those picks. Here, Jim Butler at 34, he would have been a solid pick. He was someone, again, that I was considering. Because he's my butler. And then Garlo goes at 35. I think Garlo should really go ahead of Don Mitchell in most cases, but he might not. A lot of, lot of um, circumstances around how Garlo was able to put up those big numbers last season that aren't going to be as present this season. After Garland at 35, goes Vooch. It's Vooch. It's big Vooch. Vooch is it. Vooch a bitch. I tell you what also is an interesting thing to me. And, you know, I, I browse a lot of forums and read comments and stuff. And someone was talking about DeJounte Murray saying, oh, yeah, the impact of DeJounte joining with Trey is completely overblown. Last season, we were all worried about DeRozan joining Levine and Vooch and cutting into their value. And it didn't happen, which is blatantly untrue. DeRozan took a step forward. Vooch Massive drop-off. Levine, massive drop-off compared to where they were. They went from second-round players to fourth-round players. They were big drops. So sometimes we have selective memory saying, oh, it happened with that. Those guys were all fine. They all just did exactly what we thought, and that is completely not true. Anyway, Garland, 35. Vooch, 36. Jared Allen, 37. Levine, the skater boy, goes at 38. And then we've got the two injured guys, Shea and Mobley and Barnes, and it's my pick, so I better make it. What am I going to do here? Time is running down. Um, I might take someone that I'm taking in a lot of spots. Drew Holiday, let's go. I'm just going to take guards here. I'm just going guard. Don't do it. What did you think I was going to do? I really like Drew this season. I think he's being undervalued. People are going to tell me you could have taken Jalen Brown or Darren Fox or DeRozan and all, and Rozier, and all that is true. These guys are all really closely put together. But at the moment, with how my projections are sitting, I've actually got Drew Holiday sitting as like a top 30 player. DeRozan goes at 44. So I'm really happy to get him at 42. Do I say you have to draft him at 30? No, nah, probably not. After Drew Holiday was um, Darren Fox... And if you watch my points mock draft, he's falling a lot in, in points leagues, which is ridiculous. DeRozan goes at 44. Miles Turner, 45. Aiton, 46. Aiton's value is all over the place. And obviously, things are rough with Phoenix. But the dearth of centers is real, and he's useful enough. All right, what's Raf going to do at pick 47? I think Raf might... Well, I don't know. I think he might take Des Bain. No, he took Jalen Brown. All right. JB, you've done it again. So obviously, I'm going to need... I'm gonna th Because I'm going small, I'm just going to adjust my roster here just so it looks better for my sake. Put Jason Tatum into the power forward slot. And, that, and then I, no, I need a small forward and a center still. Rogier goes at 48. That's really, really strong for Rogier. I really like that value there. Yeah, Des Bain's one of those guys that should be coming uh, as an option coming up soon. Um, Middleton is someone I'm going to look at. Oh, he just went, actually. Damn it. At 49. Ben Simmons. Look at that. He's ranked up to 53. ADP coming in on fan tracks at 59. So people are starting to grab him much earlier. Much, much earlier. Has Des Bain got small forward eligibility? He does. Okay. So he can go into my queue. I'm not as big on Bain as, as others, but I think I like him here. Or do I end up going with Ingram? Yeah, maybe Ingram is a better option. Well, I can't take Bain because he's gone. McCollum went at 50. Bain went at 51. I do end up with Ingram in this spot a lot, don't I? Um, Jamal Murray, I've bumped a little bit in my rankings as well. I bumped Jabari Smith a lot in my rankings recently. 
Well, there goes Ingram, so I can't get him. Al. So Bain and Ingram, the two guys in my queue got 51 and 52. Sorry, sometimes I don't see the screen because I'm looking over at Draft Tracker on Basketball Monster just to see where I'm valuing players and who's going where. Do I get a center? And if I do, who? Valanciunas goes at 53. The only center I could look at here is Shingun, and it does feel too early. But let's just do... Oh, I can't do it. No. All right, so we're not going to take a center now. We are going to take... What are we going to do? Hmm. This is tough. I'm going to take... Time is running down. Vassell. Devin Vassell, slide on to my team. Haven't really drafted him many spots. It's ooh, Sorry for hitting the mic. It's probably a little early for him. But I think he makes a little bit of sense on this squad. Boost some steals. Hit some threes. So Vassell goes at 55. It is early. I, I, I grant you that. It is early. Uh, Giddy goes at 56. Bridges is another option there as well. Jamal Murray was another option I was considering. If it does slide back to be uh, uh, to get Murray, I will. I just was looking to get a forward eligible player there. Bridges could have been the guy for sure. I just think there's more upside in what Vassell can bring this season. Jalen Green and Kevin Porter are also names that I am going to... Well, there goes Jalen. Um, of course, I'm always going to be interested in Kevin Porter because I think he's undervalued. Vassell goes 55, Giddy 56, Jalen Green, Filipino legend goes at 57, the Baptist John Collins goes at 58, I actually like that one, let's put Horsecock, Keldon Johnson in the queue as well, Benny Simmons goes at 59, this is where we're starting to see Simmons go, I think you start to see him push into the 40s in points leagues, and we're about to round out round 5 here, pick 60, so I think Ananobi's probably going to go, Paolo is going to go soon, Christian Wood, the crucifix is going to go, Brunson is going to go. Maxi is going to go. I'm just going to throw a few blokes in my queue there. I haven't really drafted OG. Maybe I'll take him if we get back around to it. The game over, leave the draft. That is a massive L from you. The headmaster goes at 60. Um... All right, what are we doing? Okay. Who's... Oh, this guy, what's he doing timing out again? My guy. Jordan Poole goes at 61. I'm going to throw that guy on auto-draft because he's not here and he's just auto-picked two in a row. Um, auto-draft, who is it? Game over. Auto-draft, always. You can fix it yourself when you get back in. Um, okay. What are we looking at here? So I'm just trying to work out my squad. So after pool is Maxi, it's Brunson. Two of those guys were in my queue, as you saw. Um, Markinen is going to be... I've got to get him into my queue just to get me some big value. Oh, no. Well, there he goes. So I can't get him. Do I take Smitty? Needing bigs. Again, this is early for Jabari, but I'm just taking some flyer guys. Or do I take the... No, let's take the... Um, let's take the Mustang, I think, here. Whose horse is that? All right. Let's take Keldon Johnson. I don't... I don't feel super about that, but I think there's good scoring potential there with him. I do need some assists, so and I need a center, obviously. So Jalen can go into my queue. There goes ah, well, there goes Jabari. Yeah, I, I, yeah, should I have done it? Probably. Ah, Smitty. The Jedi. OG and Obi goes. But what about Scarf? OG. Balenciaga stop ones. OG. Uh, you better stop OG. He goes Kevin Porter at 69 as well. In a lot of spots he falls so far, but not here. Giggity. So I need that center. What am I going to do with that? Not really super loving this team at the moment. Porter, 
Kevin Porter Jr. at 69, Michael Porter Jr. at 70, Paolo Banquero at 71, Christian Wood, he will go into my queue. Wendell Carter will go into my queue. Yusuf Nurkic will go into my queue. So I need center and assists. But the assists I can get a little bit later. There are some assists that appear somewhat later in the draft. So let's try to get that big. Well, I can't get Nurk. He just went at 72. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. And then goes Wendell Carter as well at 73. So loading up on bigs, that's not um, it's not great for my team because I wanted some of those players, but I've still got Woody there available. Would put up good numbers last game, but that was without Luca. I remember that. And he still came off the bench behind Dwight Powell. Julius Randle, the double royal, goes at 74. All right. Surprised that Wood is still there. He's going to go, though, because he's at the top of this queue. Clay Thompson at 75. Yeah, I, 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 I'm worried about him. I'm just, I'm worried. And I don't, I can't really put my finger on why. I can't put my finger on it. So, Pirtle, I don't think he's going to be the guy for me. Hopefully someone else takes him. What are you guys thinking about the Capella and the Okongwu situation? Russell at 76, that's the mistake I made last time. He's going too early on him. When I could have got some guards and assists later on. Like a Trey Jones who will look to get on the way back around. There goes Tyler Hero at 77. Everyone has a hero. True. Zero people shouldn't have a hero. So I'm either going to get Jalen Smith, Sticks, or I'm going to get the Crucifix, Christian Wood, would be my idea here. Or is there someone else that I want? I could do Purtle, I guess. Draymond Green went. So which one do I take? Wood? Uh, do I take Christian Wood? I think I might. All right. I just don't do it often, so let's try it. I think it's relatively late for Christian Wood. I think that actually does give me a bit of upside. Whereas I'm not sure a Jalen Smith pick at that point. I don't think that would be huge upside on Jalen Smith there. I think Wood's got more upside. The green pick was very interesting. Do you think he gets suspended? I don't know. I think he might, actually. I think he will. Smart goes at 80. Franz Wagner goes at 81. I haven't really seen Franz going that late recently. I also haven't seen Jaron Jackson going that early at 82. That is early. I probably want Trey Jones with my next pick, I think. Let's see if we can get there. Bud Heald is another one, as is Kyle Lowry. Oh, Lowry's gone. So Sticks goes at 83. Um, Kyle Lowry goes at 84. Alinek at 85. That is early for Alinek. This guy's on his auto draft list. Alinek wasn't the top. What the what list is he on? Did he have a Q set and then just booted? Thanks, champ. Need to find out who that is so he doesn't get invited back. Sorry, mate. Just don't want to have auto drafters in here. Who is this guy? All right, all right. You know, you won't be coming back in. Regardless of what happened, like, that's okay. Oh, no. Trey Jones went. Fuck. Um, Pirtle at 87. All right, so those point guards that I hope would last, Lowry and Jones, didn't. Brogdon is who I'm going to take. Brogdon is who I'm going to take. Toby Harris goes at 88. Is, I'm going to put Isaiah Jackson in my queue. Well, no, I, I was, but he just went. Um, that's good. It's good value for... Oh, it's not good value. It's good upside for Jackson. Let's take Brogo here. Stick him into the flex. He's a little bit early, probably. But the guys I have ranked ahead of him are guys like Cam Johnson, who is dealing with this thumb issue, Bud Heald, uncertainty, PJ Washington's an option, Gordon Haywood, Jalen Suggs, Keegan Murray. Ooh, Sexton would have been good as well. Hmm, maybe should have taken Sexo. Gordon Haywood goes at 92 from Bluey. PJ Washington goes. I'm always second guessing these picks. Like, yeah, maybe PJ should have taken. Maybe Sexton I should have taken. Buddy Heald is going to be there for me. So how is my squad looking? We've got really good points and threes and assists and steals and free throws. Average field goals, average rebounds, bad blocks. I 
My team is projected at 48 and 81 as my two percentages, which is yeah, pretty good. Capella at 93. Yeah, okay. I know there are, Again, I did a draft. I think it was Jonas Nader who took a Kong ahead of Capella. He's really big on rookies and taking big steps forward or, so, or young players. I'm not as big on just banking on that as, as a guarantee. I think Okong was a great later pick. I don't think it's absolutely foreseen that he will take over as much as I think he, I think he should have taken over last year. But I don't, what I think versus what the team does and they don't align always. Cam Johnson goes at 94. Andy Wiggins goes at 95. Mitchell Robinson goes at 96. Um, yep, yeah, surprised that Keegan Murray's fallen this far. Let's throw him into the queue. After Mitchell Robinson goes Anthony Simons. Keegan, maybe people are scared that he's coming off the bench behind uh, Casey Okpala. I don't think that's going to last. I don't know why it would last anything more than an extra day from today, but apparently it is. Well, there goes Budrick at 98, speaking of Kings or former Kings. Rob Williams goes at 99 at the Rock DJ. So annoying that he's out with this knee injury. Just, just annoying. Rock DJ. And we've got three more picks. Can I get one of these? Sexton dropping like an absolute hot potato here at the moment. Can he fall to me? Very shocked to see either Sexton or Murray going to go outside the top 100. You do not see that. Even Gary Trent, who I am not high on, but others are. Trent went 73rd in my points league mock draft, which makes no sense, but that's where he went. Well, there he goes here at 100. Timed out. Game over is back in the room. I'm going to take off his auto draft so he doesn't complain and go, why am I getting auto draft? Uh, Because you dropped out, mate. Sadiq Bay at 101. Okay, I'm shocked. Sexton and Murray both available. I, I'm going to take Murray over Sexton. But how are they both there? Well, I'm not going to take Murray over Sexton because Murray is no longer available. It's got to be Sexo then. That is pretty crazy. I, I think that both of those guys fell to that spot. And I almost had a choice between them. But the choice was taken out of my hands. And that really just... A Sexton addition to this team just pushes me squarely into a small ball sort of build. Herbert Jones goes at 104. Steals specialist. Maybe there's a little bit more. Maybe there's not. Um, Al Horford. I'm shocked Al Horford hasn't gone as well. Kuzma goes at 105. I'll throw... Horford's points are a problem, obviously. But my, my team is so stacked in scoring. I think I'll beat basically everyone in the points category that I can add Horford to help give me a little bit of extra value in maybe field goal percentage. And he's not a bad assist guy, for a big man especially. Boyan goes at 106. That feels really early. Jeremy Grant's still there as well. It's getting into Jeremy Grant territory. Jalen Suggs I'll throw into my queue. Monty Morris I'll throw in there. Dinwiddie I'll throw in there. Joshy Hart works for me here as well. Do I put Chris Duarte in the queue? Or do I just take him anyway? It's like a reflex. Jeremy Grant goes at 107. Um, okay. Monty Morris goes at 108. Brandon Clark, 109. Um, the MRI on Jokic's wrist came back positive, which is good. Yeah, good, good result. Or came back negative and didn't show anything serious, so that's good. But it does also just go to show you that no one is immune from getting hurt. Not that he's suffering an injury or going to miss time necessarily, but he had to have miss. Yeah, he's been precautionally sat out because of a wrist problem. No one is immune to it. Bob Portis goes at 110. Portis's value is going to be elevated early on. He is maybe going to start with Middleton out. Oh, there goes Duarte at 111. This is sometimes what happens. I end up drafting a guy all the time in round 11 or so, and people go, well, that must mean he's an absolute must-draft guy. Some people just start going too high on him. Like, Duarte's not that good. I don't think he's that good. I think he was a bad draft pick last season. I think he was overhyped last season. I think he's solid enough. But just because he always seems to fall with what I need in round 11 or 12 and I pick him doesn't mean that you need to go earlier to get him. That's not what must-draft means, and must-draft is garbage, as we know, in fantasy leagues. You don't have to go out of your way to get those players. There are other guys around. Zubats goes at 112. Zubats' value is all over the place. Sometimes he's in the 80s. Sometimes he's in the 130s. It's all over the shop. It's all going to depend, of course, on how much small ball the Clippers actually do play. 
they play a ton of it, then his value is limited. Vanderbilt goes at 113. All right. So I might take, I'm going to take Jaw or, no, let's just take Horford here. All right. It's just too late. Horford, I don't love his scoring, but I, I can absorb that pretty easily. And it gives me a little bit of a boost in some other categories that I might have needed. And it also gives me at least a second center eligible player. My bench spots are probably not going to be centers. I'm going to hope to get Din with your heart. Come back. Suggs I'll throw in there. Um, who else will I look at? Cole Anthony, maybe. So after Horford goes Claxton at 115. I just thought it was too late for Horford. Sometimes he goes in the 70s in some drafts. So am I getting a lot of value? I'm getting a little bit. Is it the greatest pick for me? For my team build? No, not the greatest. But it's I think it makes somewhat of well, some sense to me. After Claxton goes Bob Covington, I am really just not interested in Covington, especially not as one of my starters. I'm not interested in that at all. I just don't see upside outside of injury. Um, he's older as well and had some injury problems. I, yeah, I, I don't get it. I could be wrong on that easily. Suggsy goes at 117, could be wrong on him. I'm valuing him relatively highly, but it might not work out. Dort at 118, cool. Probably too early. Where's my soundbite? Can't find it. That's a shame. Oh, no, there it is. No, my son is also named Bort. Ah, there goes Dinwiddie at 119. Josh the Hitman Hard at 120. Sick, great. Love it when my two Q, goes, Q guys go at the, in the one spot. It's always awesome. Interestingly, no one taking Russell Westbrook so far. I wonder where he will end up going. He normally goes in most drafts I do around this spot. Hartenstein's going to be an option for us here. Maybe I do take a Kongwu as my Al Horford. No, I don't really need him, though. Uh, Rowan Barrett goes. Jaden McDaniels goes at 122. Hmm. Oh, the man on the street. He's got to be an option for me. Jordy Clarkson just really just trying to supercharge some scoring, some assists. Who else actually? Not that he's supercharging assists. Who else can give me assists here? Ooh, there is not much. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, maybe uh, no, it's got to be Cole Anthony. Uh, after Jaden McDaniels goes, the wave pulled to Anthony Melton. Um, yeah, I just I don't see massive minutes upside outside of injury. For him to get to twenty five plus, it means that Milton, Corkmas, Thibault basically don't play, and I don't really think that's realistic. Stewart goes at one twenty four. I am going to do a show. And normally I only do this on Basketball Monster where we project out all the minutes for every game. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a show here just showing who, who I think plays minutes on opening night in every team's first game. Show you how I think the rotation... And then you'll get to look at the guy. Oh, that is actually hard to find those minutes. After Stewart goes at 124, it is Bones Highland at 125. Is that early? Maybe. Cole Anthony is going to be my pick unless um, Nurkic Circus takes him which is possible, but I don't think he will. I think he's looking more at big men, field goal percentage guys. Oh, no, he took Conley. Anyway, I'll take Cole Anthony. Sit on my bench, boost my assists a little bit, helpful with some steals, don't care about his field goals. Really leaning into a strong, small build here. I don't know if it's strong. It's a, it's a build. Um... At the moment on the standings, AM is projected first, then Kev the C pickle, then me. But my team is projected to beat both of those teams in a head-to-head matchup. So I'm happy with how it's tracking. Walker Kessler, maybe just as a flyer later, we'll chuck him into the queue. Tari Eason and then Aldama there. Oh, there goes Kessler. What the hell? At 126, that is early. Although Kessler, I actually, I don't mind Kessler at 126. I'll take it back. I'll take it back. I don't mind it there. Again, we're swinging for upside here. Beverly at 129. As I just filled it up with Aldama and Eason. Brooke Lopez at 130. Hartenstein is the other guy that I probably would want to just have a look at. Brooke Lopez at 130. It's okay. It's okay. I'm surprised that Kongwu hasn't gone. So maybe I just take him for upside sake as well. And the other one I can take here is just Fultz. Just in case you know, I've got the him and Anthony combo. Well, there goes Hartenstein at 131. Um, game over is back in back in the game now. Is he going to make his picks or is he going to let it roll? You know, oh no, he made it. There you go. The pencil Harrison Barnes, boring Barnesy. A 
I get it. You can take some boring ones with your bench, but take some high picks as well. Take some flyers. So what does he do with the next one? Jaden Ivey is going to put him into my queue. Not that I necessarily want him. Will Barton. Like To me, they are both just super, super boring picks. No, you, Will! No, he's ready to sack that. Um, and there he goes, Russell Westbrook. Price of the brick going up. Westbrook goes at 134, Lonzo Ball goes at 135. Okay. You're on your bench, you've got an injured slot, no problem. What am I going to do? Do I take Clarkson and then look for an Okongwu, Dama, Eason, Fultz, Ivy next round? They watch them all just get wiped. I think I'm going to take Man on the Street, Jordan Clarkson. Uh, there goes Powell at 136, Storm and Norman. Hmm. All right, who is... Come on, make your pick, Pete. Oh, he took a Kongwu. Okay. Well, that's going to leave me with Jordy Clarkson there. And then hopefully to get Aldama maybe on the way back around. Not that Aldama has massive long-term upside. So maybe I don't. Maybe I'd take Tari. I also would like some steals right about now. That would be useful. Um... Okay. Two more draft picks left for me. Well, there goes Jaden Ivey. There goes Bogdan Bogdanovic. So really in flyer um, territory here, which is fine. Dylan Brooks is going to go onto my list as well. Probably need some steals. I don't really, I don't really need another center. Like the Horford pick didn't make a bunch of sense for my squad, but I just needed an extra center eligible player to be able to slide in there. JaVale McGee goes at 142. Put Ubre in there. Who just went? Um, Levert at 143. Josh, your team is rough. Yeah, okay. It's I'm projected second at the moment. I'm pretty happy with how it's going. Like, we're, we're good. Uh, Fultz at 144. The Sunmu at 145. Raf took Levert there in that round. Okay. What's he going to do here, Raf? Uh, Aaron Gordon at 146. Uh, I don't, yeah, I'll, he'll return this value. Is there upside in him? Probably not. Unless Maga Porter's hurt, which, of course, is a huge possibility. Who else is on the upside list here for me? Ubre, maybe. Poku. Oh, I haven't really drafted Poku much. Let's throw him into a queue. Caleb Martin goes. We're really taking flyers now. 147. Good. So I've got a bunch of options here. Aldama, Eason, Ubre, Poku. Poku? Hmm. I think... Ooh, what do I do here? Do I take Eason? Um, well, it's not my pick yet, so I can't actually make that call. But there, they are some options for me. Dorian Finney-Smith at 148. It's just boring. There's no upside in it. Truma OKK? Yeah, probably not interested in him here, am I? Kevin Herter, maybe? Kevin Herter's got more upside, I think, than Finney-Smith, but it's not massive upside, even though he is going to start because yeah, Monk and Mitchell are going to eat into his playing time quite a bit, I would say. Come on, Bluey, make a pick. Oh, he's timing out. John Wall. It's name recognition for why I'm, I'm really quite worried about his role. Yeah, who cares? It's hard to say it's a bad pick. Like I just said, Finney Smith was not one I would do, or Gordon is a little bit of a low upside pick, or even Dasunmu, but who cares? Like Dasunmu maybe can get can produce value there. Malik Beasley, he's hurt at the moment. I don't know if he's going to start. Right, so what do I, hey, shut up, Josh. What are you going to do? Um, what pick are you going to make here? I think we just... Uh, you know what? I don't really do it often. Let's just try it. Let's take Kelly Oubre, another forward-eligible player, which is useful. 
He's got upside on a punt field goal team, which is exactly what this is. It might not work up. And then I'll hope to get one of this trio, Aldama, East, and Poku, on the way back around. I might throw Oladipo in there as well. The wild thing, Jay Sean Chase. That's another one of those ones where I go, ah, fine, or whatever. But is there actually any upside in Tate? I, I don't know that there is. Even the wild thing's gone well. I can't do much about that. Big sneeze, pressure to chill, 153. He might be 250th or he might be 100th. I, so that is an upside swing, but he might play 21 minutes a night and have bad bad percentages. Mo Bamba at 154. Again, you know that I'm not big on Bamba this season, but here. One, two, three, four, five. No worries at all. Matherin goes at 155. I think Matherin will suck, and I think he'll be dropped in the first two weeks, and that's totally fine. And I think that he will be useful in February. It's all going to depend on format. You're in a weekly league. You're in a Roto Games Cup format. You draft these guys and you hold on to them. Same's probably going to happen with Eason as well. And it's going to happen with Mark Williams. And it's probably going to happen with Jalen Duran, who maybe is an option to draft. And they'll probably do nothing early on. But just your appetite for being able to hold, and in a daily changes your appetite to hold those guys, should be relatively limited. A Shabra set. Now, that is one of the most... What? 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 What the? F- what are we taking Brissett for? Anyway, Brissett at one fifty six, quickly one fifty seven. Tari Eason one fifty eight. All right, so there's one guy off my list. Who I'm surprised Aldama hasn't gone. Alex, I'm surprised Alex Caruso hasn't gone. Well, there he goes. Alex Caruso goes at one fifty nine. Be we quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. Herder at 160. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, do I take Aldama for value in week one? Or do I take Poku for maybe value later on? <sighs> All right, let's just take Santi. Okay, I'm just planting the flag, and I think Santi's going to be useful early on. And I think he's going to lose that value quickly. I agree. Why Thibault? I I know the steals and blocks are useful. Maybe if that's all you need. But I, I think the arrival of Melton and PJ Tucker actually drops Thibault's playing time a little bit. But if you think Thibault's going to get good playing time, that means Melton has no chance of hitting value. After Santi goes um, Blunty, James Wiseman. Where are you now? Big Red takes Rashawn Holmes. So we're just taking strict backup centers here. Wiseman and Holmes. All right, I mean, sure, I, I don't really see how Holmes produces anything outside of an injury. It is really tough to draft someone like that. But whatever. Steve, like, Stephen Adams is still there. I take him over Holmes every day of the week. I, I don't really understand that. Reggie Jackson at 165, I would have taken him over John Wall. Contavious Caldwell Pope, absolutely, I think, zero. Look, zero upside. But in round 14, can he be much better than that? Yes, and you took an upside pick with Caleb Martin there, so no problem. Um, Raf takes Boucher, which I'm not big on Boucher at all, but whatever. There's too much competition for minutes, I think, there in um, Toronto in that front court. And then, luckily, Poku goes with the last selection. So that is all the picks done. For me, pick one, picks, oh, round one, pick seven was Jason Tatum, followed by Kyrie Irving, Ja Morant, Drew Holiday, Devin Vassell, the um, Mustang Keldon Johnson, Christian Wood, Malcolm Brogdon, Colin Sexton, Al Horford, Cole Anthony, Jordan Clarkson, Kelly Oubre, and Santi Aldama. And that is the end of the draft. All right. Let's um, let's move on from there. Yeah, let's move on because we're, we're going quick. Guys, follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app, if you're on YouTube, you thumb it up, you leave those comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.